Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Agile IT Tech Talk. This is Sean Spicer, Head of Marketing over here at Agile IT. Um, today, we're going to be talking about mobile application management and mobile device management with Intune. Uh, and we're speaking with our uh, good friend, uh, familiar host or co-host here, uh, Matt Sosman, Microsoft Security Architect. How are you doing today, Matt? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to have you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch over presenter here. Um, as always, uh, if you guys have questions during the presentation and during the demonstration, feel free to ask them in the bar and we'll answer them at the end. Those questions will not be answered or will not be recorded and put online uh, in order to preserve your privacy. Um, but this will be available for download by everybody uh, starting tomorrow morning with the recap. Well, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And um, if you've heard me talk before, uh, you know that I'm uh, a Microsoft employee. I'm a security architect here at Microsoft, and I work with our partners and their customers to really help them be more secure and be more compliant, and and ultimately, you know, impact their bottom line by doing that. And so, um, Sean's asked me to come in here today and talk about Intune. And this is one of my favorite products. Um, it, it does it does a lot. And I could be here all week, you know, not even touch the tip of the iceberg with this thing. But here in the next 20, 25 minutes, we're going to go through um, a, little, a few slides here I have prepared. And I'm going to show you the user experience with Intune. So I have a little demo device that hopefully the demo gods cooperate here. We'll get that working. And then I'll take into the admin portal and we'll, we'll look at a few basic things. But um, you know, let's just start off and, and talk a, a little bit about Intune and, and what it is. So uh, if you probably remember maybe 2011, 2010-ish, uh, when Office 365 first started launching, Microsoft also developed uh, a device management product called Intune. And that was a product that was based on a Silverlight uh, admin portal. And um, we shall never say that again. It's actually changed quite a bit over the years. Um, <laughs> and this is becoming our product our go-to product to manage everything from mobile devices, so like iPhones, Android devices, iPads, you name it, to actual desktop and laptops. So whether they run Windows 10, Windows 8.1, Windows 7, and even Mac OS. And so literally I can manage you know, all of the devices that are in your organization with Intune. And this is a cloud-based product. And so it's all offered via Azure. And essentially, I would enroll my device into this or the applications on my device into this. And it allows me to provide control over that device or maybe just over those applications. And so Intune is part of a, a package of products called Enterprise Mobility and Security, or EMS. And so when I buy EMS, I also get Intune. Uh, you may have heard of Microsoft 365. That includes Office 365, Windows 10 Enterprise, and EMS. So I can also get into that way as well, um, or I can buy it by its standalone. Um, we'll talk more about that here coming up, but those are the multiple ways you can get this. And if you have Office 365 and you don't have EMS or Intune, there is a limited and, and kind of a basic version of Intune built into Office 365. So some of what I'm gonna show you, can, you can do today in Office 365, but a lot of what I'm gonna show you, you actually need Intune and that's where all the capability lights up. So let me um, let me show you a slide here that I, I put together for you. And uh, I'll give a copy of this uh, slide deck to Sean and, and he could post it so you all can download this later and give him a little bit more of a high resolution graphic there. But this is the journey that we went on. And so um, all the way back in 2008, it started as a Project Jupiter. And then over the years, this has really grown. Um, and we now have, you know, in the hundreds of millions of devices that are now being managed with Intune worldwide you know, on a global scale. And so uh, it's definitely been a journey. And this is a 100% cloud-based service. So it actually runs in Azure. And I, I think that's pretty interesting. You know, when, when I go out and talk to our customers, both uh, big and small, and we talk about putting their applications that run their business in Azure so they could scale and grow them and be highly available and all those things, Intune is no different. It's just another application. I think that really goes to tell the, the story of just how powerful something like Azure can be. And so we've gone a long way here. And you'll see over here on the far right, we also have some different versions of Intune specifically for education. You know, So if, if we have any education folks that are on the line, um, this might be of interest to you. But 
Um, this allows us to manage devices that would go in the hands of a, of a student and make them really easy to provision and manage and, um, and, and deconstruct if we have to and terminate and all those things. So uh, Intune's a very complex product, but it's actually pretty simple and you, you'll see that here as we, we go through it. Now, there is one thing I wanna level set on with you. And when we talk about Intune, there's actually, I call them flavors, but there's two flavors of Intune. There's MDM, mobile device management, and that's probably what you're used to hearing out there in the industry. And it is an industry term. And then there's mobile application management. You may or may not have heard of that. So let's, let's kind of walk through this. So MDM, mobile device management, this is where I, I manage the entire device. So this might be if I have you know, a bank of iPads at a school. Um, I want to manage that, those entire iPads for obvious reasons. Or maybe you hire me at your company and you give me a company-owned device. That might be uh, you know, grounds for actually managing the device. Um, and there could be other reasons too. Maybe I'm a, a factory worker, uh, you know, and I have an a, a iPhone that I use to scan barcodes you know, to do inventory. There could be a number of different reasons. But when I do MDM, I'm managing the entire device, so I have control over the entire device. So not only can I wipe only corporate data, but I can also wipe the complete device. I can factory reset it, but I can push things down to it. So I can push down applications, both apps that are in the App Store and also uh, you know, corporate apps that are not in the App Store. I can push down things like a Wi-Fi profile from my guest network. I can push down a VPN client. I could do all sorts of advanced things with that. I could lock down the device where I disable the camera, you name it. And then you have MAM or mobile application management, MAM. That's on the other side here. And so those use cases are usually around things like bring your own device, BYOD, where if you were to hire me today, you say, hey, Matt, you could use your personal phone or personal iPad or personal computer to access your email and company resources. And what MAM does is it manages just the app and the data in that app but it does not touch the device. So this is interesting. So if you hire me and you tell me that I can use my, my personal iPhone, um, well, I'm gonna use the Outlook app to access my email. I'm gonna use the OneDrive app to access my, my files or Teams or whatever. And when I sign in with my corporate username and password, my corporate credentials, well, MAM is gonna kick in and now start to protect that app. So it's gonna protect Outlook or OneDrive or Teams. And by protection, it's going to allow you to do a lot of different things, like maybe set a passcode on that app, maybe encrypt the data in that app. Maybe uh, if I leave the company, wipe only the corporate data in that app, but it doesn't touch the device. And so the point here is that it, when we talk about Intune, it's so much more than just mobile device management. Um, it's really a, a Swiss army knife. And so what I like to do is really figure out what are those business outcomes we're trying to strive towards? What are we actually trying to solve for? Um, maybe it's not an MDM solution. Maybe it's more of a MAM solution. Maybe it's both. But what are those scenarios? And now let's start looking at the capabilities of the product and how it can, how it can work. Because it does do so much. So you got MDM and you got MAM. And I'll show you a quick demo here of both of these in just a moment. Um, when we think more about Intune, though, um, and you start to think about all the data that is on these devices, it's, it's really sensitive data, right? So the you know everything from emails with financial uh, contracts in there to maybe intellectual property, maybe PII, maybe your own customer's data, and not just an email, but maybe in files in your OneDrive or if you're using Teams and those chat conversations. And so that sensitive data is everywhere. And so you want to be able to protect it no matter where it is. And the interesting thing about Intune is it allows me to not only manage that device if I need to do that, but then as I mentioned before, manage just that app and encrypt that app. And so now this is interesting. So if I try to take intellectual property, or better yet, maybe some maybe some uh, financial data. If I take a credit card number that was in an email that maybe my customer sent me because he wants to you know, do a purchase order. If I take that credit card number and try to copy it out of an email and paste it into you know, a web browser or into another application that's not managed by my company, well, there's a firewall there. It actually prevents you from doing that. So it sandboxes it. So it really does allow you to keep your company data safe and secured and compliant to where you, you have your hands on at all times. And so um, what I really like about this, and I you know I go way back in the mobility days. In fact, before Microsoft, I, I used to work at BlackBerry. And before then I was at Sprint, so mobility is kind of my blood. And when I think about Intune, it's, it's actually pretty cool because as an end user, 
a lot of times I don't even know that the company is managing the device. So like here at Microsoft, um, we they require us to enroll our device in the MDM, but they're really only doing a few things um, uh, you know, protection-wise on the device. And so as a regular employer and end user, it doesn't really impact my day-to-day -day job. I could still, you know, get on my device, access my email, do what I need to do, you know, collaborate, use files, and it really does allow me to balance that productivity, but it also gives IT that security and that compliance that they need. And so that's the really interesting thing here. And, and so um, this allows me to really go to any device and be able to do work. So here in, in my day job, I have five devices, believe it or not. I've got a Mac, I've got an iPad, I've got an iPhone, I've got a Surface, I've got another Windows 10 computer, um, I've got a desktop computer. And if I'm signed in with my, my Azure Active Directory credentials, right, my Office 365 credentials, so I'm signed in any of those devices with those credentials or into any of those apps, Intune will be applied. So it follows my identity wherever I go. And that, that's what's interesting. And if I leave the company, they can issue a command and wherever that identity is signed into, it's gonna wipe only that company data. So like my iPad, it's a personal iPad, but you know, I use it in the morning to check email while I'm you know, sipping my coffee or whatever on the couch. And if I leave the company and they submit, they submit their request to Intune, Intune will go out and look at my iPad and say, oh, you're signed into Outlook with your corporate credentials. You must have business data in there. So now we're gonna remove that access. So you really do get a lot of control around that. Um, I'm going to kind of skip over a couple slides here. Um, I do want to talk about this slide here. And what's interesting is um, not only are we being able to manage mobile devices, but actual Windows PCs and Macs for that matter. And so if you have a Windows PC in the environment, I can actually manage it to where I could push software to it, including Windows 32 apps. I can manage it completely. I can secure it. I can lock it down. Really, if, if you're used to you know, group policy and Active Directory, it's basically that. And so this really does allow me to manage it, even updates to my Windows machines. And so literally I can go down to Best Buy or the Microsoft Store or go on Amazon or wherever, buy a new Windows 10 computer. So let's say I'm out traveling on business and I leave my computer in the back of an Uber. Well, I can go down the street, buy another computer, sign in with my Azure Active Directory username and password with my my credentials I use with Office 365, when I sign into that Windows 10 computer with that, Intune will see that as a new business device and automatically push down things like Office, push down my expenses app, push down my other line of business apps. It'll automatically push down the policy to encrypt that device and, and lock it down if it needs to, and it's ready to go. I don't have to have an image from my IT department. I don't have to have IT you know, drop ship me a device. I just go down the store and buy one. And that's the power of Intune. And so I think that's really interesting. Um, the other thing I, I wanna mention here before I go into a demo is what we call conditional access. And so let's say I'm using my personal device. You know, I, I, I do have a personal surface. So I'm using my personal surface and you know, maybe my kids get on there and they somehow download a virus, right? Or that device becomes compromised. Maybe an attacker compromises it through malware or a phishing attack or whatever, right? Well, the next time I go to log into my email or OneDrive or anything, you know, any kind of corporate resource, conditional access kicks in. So it actually does a scan of the device and it looks at the health of the device. So every time I go to log in, it's talking to things like Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, and it's talking to the Intune agent running on my device, and it's looking to see if the master boot record's been manipulated, if the firmware has been manipulated, if malware is present, a virus is present, and if any of those things are true, it actually denies me access to the app. So if I try to open up Outlook and get to my email and my device has a virus on it, it won't let me open my email. I think that's pretty powerful um, because now we're, we're putting kind of that, that firewall there to prevent you from compromising the rest of you know, your corporate network. Um, and not only can it be applied to my personal device, but also any other device that maybe my company manages. So if I have desktops in my office, you know, I could apply it there as well. Not only can we do this for Office 365, but you see over here on the far right side, we could also do this for third-party apps. So if my company uses Box as an example, because that's where we have our business processes in, and that's what we're trained to use for file storage and collaboration, that's fine. Through the power of Intune and the Enterprise Mobility and Security suite of products, 
I can do the same thing. So if I use my, my surface and I go to sign into box.com and it notices that there's you know, a virus on my machine, it won't let me access box.com. And so I think there's some really interesting use cases there. And all of that revolves really around Intune. And so my next slide here is, I talked about this a little earlier, the, the MAM, the mobile application management. This is that sandbox. So you see those dotted lines. It's basically wrapping a security blanket around these managed apps on my personal device. And so if I sign into the Word app here as an example with not only my, my work email account through Azure Active Directory, but also my Microsoft account, my, my live or outlook.com account, well, it knows that my Azure AD credentials are tied to corporate data and it knows that my you know, consumer Microsoft account is tied to my personal data. And so it can, if I you know, leave the company, it'll issue a command to only wipe that corporate data. But then I also am able to do the sandbox. So if I try to copy data out, it won't let me copy it. If I try to save that Word document, maybe to the local device or maybe to another storage provider on that device, it'll block me from doing that. So I could, I could wrap a lot of protection around just that app. And I think this is huge because especially in the days of, of 2019 here with BYOD and people want to use their own devices at work, let them use their own device. I mean, that's employee morale, that, that's a retention strategy, that's a recruitment strategy, but then you can still have the control and the compliance you need over the data on those devices. And that's what's so cool about Intune. So rather than me showing a bunch of slides here, let's go out and let's do a quick demo. So I'm going to pull up a screen here and give me one moment to kind of get this ready. I have a iPhone that I'm going to project to my computer and give me one moment here for this to come up. Here we go. And we'll make this a little bit bigger. So here's my iPhone. And uh, what I'm going to do is let's pretend for a moment you, you just hired me at your company and you say, hey, Matt, you could use your own device. Great. Well, I can go in here to an app like Teams. And you'll notice immediately it's going to challenge me here for a passcode. Now, my iPhone here is a little old, so bear with me. It's a little slow. And so immediately to open up Teams, because it's a managed app, I have to type in a passcode. All right, so I'm going to type in a passcode here. Um, this is my test device, so yes, it is all zeros. But first, I had to type in a passcode. Now, if I had biometrics on this, like touch ID or face ID, I can use that, obviously, to get in. So that's barrier number one. Uh, barrier number two is, uh, let's pull up a team here. And I see this Word document in here. Well, I'm going to launch the Word document. Maybe I want to look at it on my phone here. But maybe I want to be nefarious. Maybe I want to download that to my device so I can leak it. Or maybe I just want to download it so I can you know, access it later. Well, if I tap on the share icon to do that, look what happens. There's that firewall I talked about, that sandbox. I don't have the ability to download that file. I don't have the ability to do anything with that Word document other than view it. Now, I could set this up so you can export it over to the Word app, and then you can you know, edit it, and that's all secured as well. So, I mean, there's different controls you can wrap around it. But you know, that's really interesting. So it stays within my managed app because it's my data, you know, my corporate data. Now, let's go a step further here. Here's some, uh, some text in one of these Teams messages. I'm going to copy this text. And I'm going to go out here. And I'm going to paste this into a non-managed application. So the Messages app, right? You'd probably agree that's not managed by the IT department. So in the body of the text here, I'm just going to try to paste that data. And look what happens. There's that firewall, that sandbox. Your organization's data cannot be pasted here. So it, it allows me to keep my corporate data in my corporate app managed by my IT department, and, but yet still keep all the personal data separate. And I think that's really powerful. And again, this is all based on your identity. And so it uses your Azure Active Directory credentials to make that distinction. And this is true on any device. Here I'm on an iPhone. If I go to an Android device, it would be the same behavior. If I go to a Windows PC, it'd be the same behavior, a Mac, so on and so forth. Now let's take this a different, different way here. Um, maybe you hire me at your company and say, well, look, Matt, our business policy and our HR policy says, if you want to get your email on your phone, you have to play by the rule. And the rule is you have to enroll your device in the MDM. We have to be able to manage the device. Well, that's okay. So as an end user, I download this app called Company Portal. 
and I launch Company Portal, and this allows me to enroll it into MDM so you can manage the whole device. So let's go through that process and what that looks like. Okay, so let me sign in. You can see I've, I've done this before, so let me get that signed back in. And this is just my demo account, so you'll probably see my credentials, but that is okay. And we will get signed in here. Now remember, it uses my identity, so once I get signed in, it's gonna see that this device is not managed. And here it's asking me for multi-factor authentication. So let's go ahead and do that on my other device. Now, once I get signed in, it's gonna see that it's not enrolled in MDM. And from here, it's gonna ask me to enroll it. And there you go. So the name of my company is Contoso in this big long name. And so here it's gonna say, well, let's enroll your device. So I'm gonna tap on begin. Now this is really important. And I wanna kind of squash a rumor out there um, there's no way for Intune to see personal data, right? So as the admin, I can't go into the admin console in Intune and, and see your text messages or your photos or any kind of personal data. It just, it doesn't exist. There's physically no way for me to do that. Now that doesn't mean I can't write an app that does that and push it out to your device, but Intune, the product cannot see this personal data. So we tell the end user up front, and I think that's pretty important to establish that trust, right? Now we can see things like the OS and the serial number and, and you know, the, the names of the apps that are in, actually installed on the device. So I'm gonna tap on, on continue and it's gonna walk me through in kind of a wizard here. So I'm gonna tap on continue, it's gonna open up the Safari browser and then it's going to redirect me over to settings. And this is kind of an older iPhone, so bear with me. Still kind of waking up here on a Thursday morning. So there it is opening up Safari and then it's gonna challenge me to open up the settings app. So we'll give it a moment to there it goes. And now we're going to tap on allow. It's going to launch settings. And then from here, I just tap on install. And this is pretty standard for iOS. Um, this is how I Apple allows um, uh, device uh, management solutions to manage the device. And so I'm just tapping on install. Now this does say that your administrator may collect personal data. Again, Intune can't see that. This is just part of the API that the Apple offers to us. And so I'm gonna tap on install and then it's done. So now at this point, it's gonna redirect me back to the company portal app. And now it's gonna go through and check the compliance of my device. So this is interesting. So what if I jailbroke my device or I rooted it, right? Well, if I did that, Intune will see it and not allow me to enroll it. So it, it notices that my, dive button on my device is healthy, that's okay. So now I'm gonna choose a category so my company can you know, identify whether or not this is company or personal. So I'm gonna choose personal for now. Now my policy also says we're gonna push down some apps. So here they're trying to push down an app called the Intune Manage Browser. So I just tap on install and it's gonna push it down. Tap on continue here. And then at this point, I'm done, I'm all set. The device is now managed and I'm all good to go. Now the company portal app allows me as an end user to download apps my company may publish out to me. Um, it is 2019. I mean, I, I do know how to download an app from the actual app store, but to make it easier, my company could publish that here. If I tap on devices, I could see all the devices managed by my company. So this is my demo environment. So you have some devices in here, but notice if I had a Mac, if I have a Windows machine, an Android phone, it all shows up in here. And at any time I can come in here and look at my device and I could tap the ellipsis here and choose to remove device. So if I leave the company and I tap remove, it's gonna remove all the personal, or sorry, all the corporate data off my device and leave the personal data alone. So at this point, I'm enrolled. MDM is managing my device. And so at this point, I could push down a policy with maybe these apps or maybe a VPN profile, or maybe I wanna lock down and turn off the camera or prevent screenshots or whatever, hundreds of different settings and I can actually do that. So that's the experience between MDM, mobile device management, and MAM, mobile application management. Now, the last thing I wanna do here before we call it a day is I wanna show you how, do you, how do you manage this? Well, I think it's important first we understand what the user experience is and the difference between MDM and MAM, because that's gonna help us out when we go into the management side. So inside the Azure portal, portal.azure.com, uh, I log in and we'll make this, font here a little bit bigger for you. And then when I log in, I've got some different options here on the left side under Intune. Now, obviously I, I don't have time to go through all this with you. I would, I would love to, but 
Let me show you some of the basics here. So we talked about mobile application management. I showed you a demo. So I'm going to click on client apps. And this is MAM. And here I'm going to click on app protection policies. And here I have some different policies I created. So here's one for iOS. And if I click on targeted apps, here's the apps that we're protecting. So we're protecting the Edge browser, Excel, Teams. Notice there's other apps I can protect, even some third party like Adobe Acrobat. There's quite a bit in here. So those are the apps that we're protecting if they're on the device. And if I go to properties, this is where I go to configure those settings. So there's lots of things I could do here. Like I could turn off backups. So if you know one of my employees wants to back up their data to iCloud or iTunes, and by data I mean emails in a Outlook app, I can prevent that from happening. Not and not having managed the device, only managing the app, require encryption, so on and so forth. You saw how I had a, a passcode on that app. Here's where I configure that passcode. If you want to really have a lot of fun with your end users, you could come out, come down here and say require your full corporate credentials. <laughs> um, I wouldn't do that. And so then if I go back here, I can assign it to different groups of people um, based on different criteria. And so that's where I go to manage MAM. It's, it's really pretty easy. I just got to know what are those settings? What are those buttons I want to push? And that's where um, Sean and his team can come in and, and kind of help you, help you realize that and what the outcome is of that. Now, when I talk about mobile, mobile device management, I'm going to go into device configuration. And here's all the different types of profiles I can create. And so to give you an idea here, here's one I have on iOS. And if I go to properties, um, this is, or sorry, let me actually go back here. Um, this is where I can go through, let's create, create a new profile. We'll just call this test. This is where I can go through and choose the platform. So you can see there's many different platforms that are supported, but I'm just gonna choose iOS. And then I could choose between a different type of profile so if I want to lock down features, I can choose device restrictions and look at all these features I can lock down. And it gets really granular. And so this is true not only for iOS, but if you go back to something like Windows, like Windows 10, I can manage my entire Windows 10 environment with Intune. I think this is just absolutely huge. It makes it really easy. And, and that way, you don't have to go around creating images, right? If I just buy a new computer or I you know, have one shipped in from you know, an OEM and you sign into it, Intune sees it and will just automatically push down the apps and push down the policies here that you have configured. So it's really, really powerful. The last thing I wanted to show you here with Intune that we're going to call today is if I go back here and I go to device enrollment, this is where I can configure uh, what we call um, device enrollment um, uh, or, or compliance policies, rather. And so I can come in here and I can configure this for Apple, Android, and Windows. And as you can see, there, there's quite a bit of, of granularity here. So I can say, when you go to enroll your Windows computer into Intune, you, know, you log in with your credentials, maybe I want to require Windows Hello. Maybe I want to create some different profiles. So if you're in accounting, you get these set of apps and these set of policies versus somebody in HR versus somebody in sales. And not only for Windows, but I can also do that for my mobile devices as well. So there really is quite a bit here going on with Intune. Um, and because it is a cloud service, I can have all the logs, all the reports available at my fingertips. And it just allows me to get a better pulse on the devices that my company is using or my users are using to access my company resources. So I'm going to pause there and uh, let's see if there's any any questions out there. So Sean, do we have anything in the IM window or in the chat? Yeah, uh, Matt, uh, Joe asked, uh, as an IT admin, what can Intune see as far as the management portal? And he says that you answered the question, but uh, maybe we can go a little bit deeper into that? Yeah, absolutely. So what, what can I see as an admin? Um, yeah, I, I, I told you before, I used to be a, a BlackBerry guy, right? And if you remember the BlackBerry days with BlackBerry Enterprise Server, I could see all your personal data. I could see everything you're doing on the phone, right? Text messages, phone call logs. I can't do that with Intune. Um, the feature is just not there. So as an example, here's Intune. I go to devices. I'm going to click on all devices. There's that iPod that I just enrolled, right? And so here's where I can go and I can see information about that device because it is enrolled into MDM. So I can see things like device manufacturer and if, whether or not it's compliant, right? So is it jailbroken? Does it have a passcode? Whatever my policy says. Um, because it's MDM, I can 
manage it. So I can remove it, I can do remote lock, I can wipe the entire device if I want to. And then I can look at more granular things about the hardware. So things like storage space, there's my conditional access I talked about. I can see what apps are on the device. So, so keep that in mind. I can get an inventory of the, of the apps on the device. But as you notice, when I go through the rest of this, there's no area to view anything else. I can't see text messages or phone call logs or anything like that. Now, if you do have a requirement for that, theoretically, you could use a custom app that you deploy when they enroll into Intune, and then you can use that custom app to retrieve that data. Um, and there's other third-party solutions out there that allow you to do that. But um, here at Microsoft, we, we take privacy really seriously. And so there's, there's no way for you to monitor that or view that for a user's device. This is really it. So hardware information, what apps are on the device, and then some, uh, as you saw, some basic commands. Let me go back. Some basic commands to manage the device. That's really it. And these commands are going to change based on the OS. So if we go back here and we choose a Windows machine, so here's my virtual machine here that's running Windows 10. Um, here you can see I can wipe that machine. I could do a virus scan with Windows Defender. Um, I could start a new remote remote assistance session if I have that enabled. Um, because it's Windows, I can see not only hardware but what apps are on it. And I, of course, I can manage the configuration profiles of that. Uh, but again. I can't see any personal data that might be on that Windows machine, through Intune at least. Now that doesn't mean there's not other ways to do that, like if it like through a uh, you know, regular old Active Directory. Any other questions? Excellent. I'm glad you mentioned the uh, compliance status of the phone. So when I went to Inspire last year, I had not installed any of the Microsoft apps on my phone. I'm very protective of my personal devices and personal data, keeping things separate between work and home. Um, but I had a jailbroken or a rooted Android, and mm -hmm. I had to factory reset in order to connect to the Agile IT uh, assets and apps. Ah, right. So, so here's my device compliance. And I have a policy here for iOS. You can create one for Windows and the other operating systems. And this is where I would go through. And notice there's a few settings here. So I can require a, a corporate email profile. But if I go to device health, there you go. Jailbroken devices. Right now it's being blocked. And so this allows me to prevent jailbroken devices to have corporate access. Now I could also install a third party, uh, like antivirus agent, if you will, through somebody like Bitdefender, Zifton and they can monitor the actual threat level of the device, like if it's iOS or Android. Um, but I could do some other interesting things here. I could say, okay, require a passcode. So if you remove the passcode off of your device, because you, know, you get annoyed or you get tired of it, well, that automatically places you out of compliance, thus you lose access to all your corporate resources and data. So that's kind of interesting. And then under device properties here, I could also specify the version of OS. Um, this is becoming really common out there because companies want to make sure that if you're accessing my data, that you're on the latest up-to-date version of operating system. So for iOS, you know, patches come out every now and then for security. They want to make sure that you're on the latest security patch, you know, build. And so if I am not, it's not going to allow me access to my corporate data. So there's a lot of, lot of control you have here over those, over how those devices access your resources. And that's kind of the beauty around Intune. And of course, there's a ton of reports. In fact, there's over 20 reports here in Intune um, that you can monitor and, and look for data. Great, and those policies are, uh, you can configure them at the group level. So if you do have, for some reason, a employee that needs to have access um, to company data from a rooted or jailbroken device, uh, let's say they're doing pen testing for the company, um, you can do that as well, right? Yes, so if I come in here and I, I create a policy, I can go to assignments, and here's where I would choose either all users or I can be granular and choose groups. So I'd, have, I'd have a group for you know, pen testers and assign that policy there. And in that policy, I would, I would you know, not block jailbroken or rooted devices, and I would allow them to access. Yep. And that's the cool thing. Again, it's all based on identity, not necessarily the device, you know, because traditionally when we think about MDM and just managing computers and mobile devices, we think about, oh, gosh, I need to manage that device. Really, it's the identity. So wherever you're signed in, we're going to manage whatever device you're signed into. 
or in the man world, whatever app you're signed into. And of course, I have my exclusion policy. So if you know the executives, <laughs> if if they want to, you know, have a, have a different <laughs> treatment, of course we could do that as well. And of course, that's that's really common. I'm sure everybody on the call can attest to that. And so as you see, I mean, there's a lot going on here. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say we actually had a discussion about that during one of our closed sessions when we were talking about content coming up. And one of the questions was, how do you convince the CEO that this is all worth it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the, the biggest thing that I come across when it comes to something like device management, whether it's Windows or Mac or mobile devices, is really, I, I like to ask the question of why. You know, why are we doing this? And, and oftentimes I find that there's really no reason to do it um, because they're really trying to protect their intellectual property or the data itself. And that's where it gets interesting because we have other solutions in the Microsoft world here. One is called Azure Information Protection, where we actually protect the data, the file itself, and we encrypt the file itself. And so if I send everybody on this call an email with a file attachment, I can actually encrypt that attachment. You can forward it to whoever you want. You can put it on whatever device you want, whatever cloud you want. That file is actually encrypted. And my IT department can revoke access and monitor wherever that file is. And that's what's really interesting here is when we start to ask why and really dig into things, sometimes I don't need to manage my devices. Sometimes I might just want to manage the data. And that's kind of the modern way of, of thinking about IT, um, in my opinion. And that's what some of these products allow you to do. And so I see them as true solutions because now I'm able to enable the business. I'm not going to lock them down with security. I'm not going to prevent them from being productive. You know, it gets me what I need, but it also gives the end user the, the freedom to use whatever device, whatever cloud, whatever they want to do to get their job done. And in the end, that's going to help the business, right? But you and, and IT, you still to what have, you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, and that goes back to what you were saying earlier about balancing productivity with security, which has just been an age-old conundrum of where does productivity start to fall off because there are too many barriers created by security. Um, and with um, in regards to Azure Information Protection as well as Cloud App Security, which both uh, serve to secure that data, um, we, if you're watching this on YouTube, we've got those on our YouTube channel. Those are in the Tech Talk sections of our blog. And for those of you who are on the line live, uh, I will send out links to those prior demos and Tech Talks that we've got in tomorrow's recap email. Fantastic. Yeah, definitely would encourage you to take a look at Cloud App Security and, and Azure Information Protection. Um, and, and the neat thing about the Microsoft products, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a Microsoft guy, as an IT professional for the last 20 years, the neat thing with these products is they all talk to each other. And so I can see things about a device and what kind of data is on the device, whether it's, you know, contains credit card data or financial data or whatever. I can see things about your identity that's being used to access the device. Everything is integrated. And, and that's what allows us to, again, balance productivity and security, um, where a lot of our traditional solutions out there just have not allowed for that. And so, um, the clouds really enabled that, but our, our products here in the last few years has really opened up the, the opportunity there. Um, and, you know, I'm at Microsoft now, but back in my my day, you know, I was a sysadmin. I was, you know, in a lot of your shoes as well. And when I when I thought about, you know, my nights and weekends, of course, it was, you know, always being on call. But having solutions like this, you know, would have helped me back then to get my nights and weekends back and, and really, you know, allow me to stop keeping the lights on, but go out there and enable the business. And that's what this is all about. Um, you know, one last thing here on Intune is um, there's some interesting things I can do here. So if, if we have any education folks on the line or watching this, um, I could push out eBooks to those devices. And so if I, if I have a, a school, for example, with a bank of iPads, I could push out the eBooks and manage the content on those devices from a central pane of glass here. I think that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, now, for my more advanced uh, IT pros on the phone and watching this on YouTube, I can also push out PowerShell scripts to all my Windows computers. So if I need to do some more advanced management or, or manipulate settings in the OS that are not available in the Intune profiles here, I could push out a script. And as you know, with PowerShell, really the sky's the limit. Almost anything can be done. Very, very powerful tool here. And again, this is... This is just one tool in our tool belt, but it's my favorite because it, it just it does so much. And as you see, it's actually pretty easy to use, point and click. 
you just have to realize what checkbox do I want to check and what do I need to do before I check and what do I need to do after I check it. And that's the hard part, but that's where Sean and his team can come in and help. So with that being said, um, I think I've gone over my time here a little bit. Do we have any other questions before we call today?